Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about when significance testing goes wrong. We'll do it all in about three minutes. Let's go. So when we run a hypothesis test, there's two possible things that can happen to H0. It can be true or false. And at the end of the test, there's two possible decisions we could make. Either reject H0 or don't reject it. So four possible outcomes total when we look at the combinations of those two. I've got a table here summarizing it, and two of these combinations make us happy. We reject H0 when H0 is false. We do not reject H0 when H0 is true. That leaves two situations that are not so good. As we go through this conversation, please bear in mind that we don't generally have information about whether H0 is true or false at the beginning of the day. If we get that information at all, we typically get it much later. So each of those two um, bad outcomes have names. The first is the type 1 error or false positive. That's when we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. So something happens by random chance and we mistake it for being significant. The second thing is a type 2 error or a false negative. That's when the null hypothesis is not rejected when in fact it is false. So there is something going on and we just didn't pick it up with our test. The names false positive and false negative come from medical testing where the logic is very similar to significance testing. That tests, you may be testing for a disease, you may have it or not have it, the test may pick it up or not pick it up. Overall, type 1 and type 2 errors are summarized in this table. The check marks are where we have the outcomes that, that are what we would hope for. A couple quick examples. The manufacturer of a certain brand of chocolate claims that on average their bars weigh 350 grams. I suspect they might be overestimating the number. I get a sample and I reject the manufacturer's claim with a p-value of 0 0.0089. Now suppose that the manufacturer was actually right and their chocolate bars do have an average weight of 350 grams. In that case, I would have committed a type 1 error or false positive. Example 2. A restaurant claims that the mean sodium content of one of its sandwiches is 920 milligrams. I analyze a sample but find insufficient evidence to reject the claim at alpha equals 0.01. Now, if the restaurant's claim had actually been false, if, for example, the mean sodium content of its sandwiches was 950 milligrams, I would have committed a type 2 error. 